And this was another car that I had to cut the switch off. You see the same things over and over and over. This car was filthy. It was on E. And I'm seeing a certain pattern happen with people. And once again, damage. Once again, you see certain things. And when I rented this out, this car was in prime condition. So, this is another kill switch vehicle. I had to shut it off. And the guy was begging me not to do it. And this is something else that I tried. And I'll talk about it in the kill switch video. But once again, there are certain attributes that are just epidemic with this demographic. They can't drive. They cannot handle their finances. And they beg for mercy. It's wild. All right. So here's the damage. Right there, right there. And that's poking out. But I can still rent it out. Cleaned up pretty good. So there's some more damage there. And I gotta go get a tag. And there's some more damage there. Young black men just can't drive, man. It's pretty much it. All right. This is a car that I had to shut off. And there's a little damage there. It's dirty. I'm going to tell you why it's dirty once I do the jewel kit, you know. And a little bit more damage here. <coughs> Some damage there. He hit something. But I can still rent this car out. So that is what has happened. <sighs> this guy had this car seven days. And I'm going to tell you why he had it seven days. And why it is insane. This is a long-term rental that I got back. And man, it's not damaged. Now, the tires are showing belts, but once I go ahead and get the uh, GPS in, belts, but it's not damaged, it's not super filthy. Um, so I'm gonna get the tires done and then I'm just gonna get the GPS kill switch put in and then uh, I'm gonna rent this bad boy out again. This car is made close to $5,000. So no check engine lights on, so we're good to go. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Long-term rental. This car has made me the most money since I've been renting cars. I have made $7,500 from this guy and it's fun. It's fun. I will tell you guys what happened in the next Kill Switch Chronicles 
but oh man i am thrilled this vehicle was making me the kind of money that a lot of real estate owners get in rent more to come Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We have had a serious week. Let me talk about it. Man, this has been a crazy, crazy week in the car rental business. You saw the preliminary footage. I'm about to break it down. What's up, guys? Man, let me go ahead and just tell it. Let's start with the first part of the Kill Switch Chronicles. The guy who was renting the Lexus sent me a text that the car would not start. And I was just sitting there like, what is this with Lexuses and Acuras messing up? So I was like, okay, where's the car? And I'll have it towed. Didn't hear from him. So I go to my GPS and I see that he is in Ohio. And I'm like, but the car wouldn't start. And he goes from Ohio to Kentucky, back to Georgia. For seven days, I'm checking to see when he's coming back for this car that doesn't start. He's going all across the country in this car that doesn't start. So he comes back to Georgia and I catch him in College Park. So I cut the car off. And then he sends me, it's like, yeah, the car won't start over. Like he sent me this whole pack of lies. Like uh, it's in this gated garage. I had to go out of town. You took the car out of town. That's why it was so filthy. You took the car out of town. Whole time, he's just lying to me, just lying to me. So I made like about $1,700 off of him before he became a yard bird. And he got, only reason he got seven days of free rent is he was out of state. And this is something I have seen over and over and over again, where I'm gonna have to create a policy where you cannot take my car out of state because if it breaks down, what they're gonna be like, hey, you know, you gotta fix this. And I'm like, wait a minute, how can I fix it when it's out of state? But this guy continued, and he's like, I got witnesses and I just rented that car out again. I got the car back took it to mechanic, the traction thing came on. And like, if you don't know anything about cars, when the traction thing comes on, other lights pop on, but the car drove fine. I didn't have no issues. And I just rented that bad boy out. Dude was just straight up lying. I don't know what his game plan was. I don't know what he thought was gonna happen, but he also damaged the car. And this is a correlation. If you're ever going to rent cars, you want to get your car back as soon as they stop paying. Because the more, the longer they keep your car and don't pay, the greater chance of damage. Lot of damage. Lot of damage. The BMW. Guy stopped paying. I cut the car off. Oh my God, he had all kinds of stories when my daughter got sick and I had to spend money for the doctors. So he's telling me he has money, but he ain't gonna pay me. And I turned the car off once, then I turned it back on and he did not pay me. We had an agreement, he did not pay me. So this let me know that if I turned the car on again, he still wasn't gonna pay me. He still wasn't gonna pay me. So he had that car about six days and that's why it's not messed up because I got the car back. It was absolutely filthy, filthy. And the tank was on E, the tank was on E. And I'm just sitting here like, that car is rented out. Cause see, this is one of the things that happens with hire car. You have a lot of people on hire car. And if you have your car in the hands of a yard bird, they will prevent you from getting your hands in the cars of a responsible renter. And uh, tomorrow, I'm going to pick up another car. I picked up a car Tuesday. I picked up the BMW yesterday. Um, 
Got the Range Rover back. That was a long-term rental that went real bad. But I got the Range Rover because like there, there's a new trend here because I'm managing this better. I'm not having the issues that I had in the beginning when I started doing this. Because let's talk about the Range Rover. Oh my God, Becky. That chick paid me $7,500 for a vehicle that cost me 15,000. She was paying 1700 bucks a month for four and a half months. And when I got the car, and let me tell you the story that happened. And this is a common thing that happens. Common, common, common. I don't know what it is with these chicks in Atlanta, but they got these dudes who don't have shit. So she told me, and this is how it's like, I get a call from her and she's like, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, I'm teaching the class. Uh, what is it? And she would never tell me what it was. She would never tell me what it was. And you know, we, we keep going back and forth doing this dance and she wants to talk. And I finally get her to tell me, she's like, well, I was sick. I let my boyfriend drive the car, more on that later and he has warrants and he got arrested and the car got impounded. So I am sitting here because I finally find out where the car, but here's the thing, here, here's the, she could not tell me where it was impounded. She said, my sister went out there and they would not tell her where the car was found. So my, today I had my assistant call all of the record yards to find the car. And then she finds the car after making her 10th phone call. The car had been impounded for six days. It was $484 to get the car out of the impound. So me and my assistant, we go down there and I'm just sitting there like, what am I gonna find? What am I gonna find? Cause there was only a six day period where she didn't pay, only six days. So I go to the tow yard, I have to provide insurance to get out of police impound. And I'm out there walking, I'm walking. And like the lady tells me it's to the left and I actually passed the car and I'm all walking around the record yard and I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff. Then I, I meet a tow truck driver and I was like, hey, where's this? And he said, oh, it's right there. And then I go find the vehicle. Oh my God, y'all. When I went to the vehicle, it was clean. There was armor all on the tires. There was no sand. It wasn't trashed. I was like, what? <laughs> There was no broken mirrors. There was no damage. There was nothing wrong with this car. Nothing. I was like, I, I did a little happy dance out in the parking lot. And the vehicle had half a tank of gas. I'm like, am I in the twilight zone? There was no lights on. Uh, I, I do had to replace the brakes. I had to replace the brakes and I'm probably going to get an oil change. But that's it. That's it. I was like. So boys and girls, the correlation is very clear. If they're paying for the car, they're going to take care of it. If they're not paying for the car, they're going to mess it up. And this guy who had the car for seven days. And once again, she stopped paying when the car was impounded. So she did not have possession of the car. She wasn't driving the car. She wasn't putting miles on the car. And it was in, um, it was in the same condition that when I ran it to her, I was like, oh my God, I was shocked. Cause I, you know, cause this is why I go in. Like when it's a long-term rental, I haven't seen this car in five months. And it's that pet boys. We're doing a brake job, whatever that is. And then I'm going to throw a GPS kill switch in it. So I've got both Range Rovers back. And because the people consistently paid, they weren't messed up. I mean, the, the Range Rover, you know, he, ran, he, he drove it. He drove it. The tires had to be replaced. That cost me 310. But I made 4,500 bucks. 310? I can live with that. I can live with that, right? So what is starting to happen is the repairs are slowing down. They're slowing down. Uh, this week, 
The BMW with the hanging off bumper, once again, the bumper is hanging off the BMW again because once again, someone hit something. So I got that going on, but we're, we're kind of getting toward the end. I am starting to see. I got a girl who has that white BMW X5 and she's young, but here's the thing. When she approached me, she was like, I need more room for more packages. She had a plan. She has rented this BMW X5. She's had it for a month and she's never been late. So I ain't worried about her. So it's starting to turn around because I'm not buying any more cars uh, until next year because I need to learn how to get my utilization up high because at the moment I have, let's see, the BMWs at Classic, the Range Rovers at Pet Boys, and I have BMW, Mercedes, two Camrys, and a BMW. So I have seven cars that I can't rent, and I have two cars. So currently I have about 22, 23 cars rented out. And once I get the Range Rover back, and I got two Acras, I got two Acras that will probably go out this week. One that's probably gonna go out tomorrow. So I am, I am feeling pretty spiffy, because once again, if I have it in inventory, I can get it rented out. The issue is like I got another BMW with the bumper hanging off and I already know how much that's going to cost. And I just parked it and I'm going to wait until this business generates the income to pay for it versus me just paying for it because I, I just fixed one. I got another claims check. So the six month is kind of critical because like I said, my utilization has gone up. And if I can get all my cars and if I can get, because once again, one of the things I've learned is bad renters, people who don't pay you will mess up your car. They will mess it up. As the evidence, this girl had this car for five months and there ain't nothing wrong. There's not a scratch on it. There's not a mark on it. There's nothing wrong with it because she actually treated it like it was her car. When I found the car, it was washed. It had so there is a correlation. And once again, I'm like, tomorrow I gotta go pick up another car and that's going to get me down and I got some more issues to solve. But we're getting there, man. We're getting there because one of the things I had to learn, and this was a really, really good lesson for me. I had to learn how to run this business. And this is why I paused on buying cars. I got a bunch of cars. Now I have all types of data. I got crazy data. So when I start buying cars again at the beginning of the year, and also let me tell you, I'm not going to buy, I'm probably going to start with 2012, 13 and 14, because typically those cars, I've had the less mechanical issues because they had less miles on them. So I'm not going to be trying to, you know, I'm probably going to buy 2012, 13, 14, 15 BMWs. I'm going to slow my little roll down because my corporate credit card, I am, you know, it's like I got some stuff to fix, but since the, the repairs are starting to really slow down because that, that sucker went from nothing to 25,000 real quick, real quick. So we're starting to get a hang of this because this girl had my Range Rover for five months and not a scratch is on it. Yet I would rent it to some poor person, and we're gonna talk about this, who will fuck it up in three or four days. Three or four days, they will mess it up in three or four days. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm seeing a certain trend here, and like next year when I start buying cars, I'm probably gonna stick with BMWs, I'm probably gonna get some more Range Rovers, I'm probably gonna get another Porsche, because at that $70 a day range, I don't have all the stuff that I have at the lower range. Also, I got a girl who rented a car for 35 bucks a day and it had to have brakes. So I went ahead and take it to take Pet Boys. I got an account. They fixed the brakes. It was like 220, one of the cheapest repairs ever. And I noticed when I saw the car, the car was washed. 
she had vacuumed it out. So I'm starting to get better renters versus these liars because like I said, this one dude, I got like 1700 out of him and he didn't do anything to the car major. You know, he, he hit something in the front, but the car is still rentable. So I did not have to pull from that 1700 to fix something. And I can rent that car and that car I bought correctly. That car cost me 9,100 bucks. So we're starting to get there. We're starting to see some stuff. And the drama is like, oh, here's something else that happened. Two kill switches failed. Now, what does that mean? I turned them off and they kept driving. <laughs> and I went ahead and called up the GPS kill switch because there was like, oh man, you should put those kill switches in there. Because you know, when you hit the disabled car and then you go check the map and see that they're in Tucker and they're downtown. Atlanta. I'm like, what the hell? So we've reset the GPSs and we're gonna see if they actually cut off. We're gonna see what happens with that. Because I got a few more issues to clean up. I should get it all cleaned up by next week. And this has been a busy, busy week, busy week. I'm moving Saturday. Yesterday, I had movers here moving the treadmill, moving like the upstairs is completely empty. And we just got stuff down here. And tomorrow, me and my assistant, we're going to get the basement cleaned up and we're going to be ready to rock and roll. Um, Saturday. So I got two more days here and I'm out. And there are many of you, it's like, hey, you shouldn't sell the house. You should like, look, I'm on a different trajectory because like I said, with the global reset, crime is about to go through the roof. It's already escalated in many areas. And this house is not the most defensive posture house at all. I mean, there's a weak entry point there. There's, I mean, literally someone can be in the basement and I wouldn't know they were in the basement. I wouldn't know. Because this house, I mean, it's a great house. It's a beautiful house. It's 5,000 square feet of luxury. But I have been selling stuff. Oh man, I've been selling stuff. And also, I am not taking any of the glasses. I'm not taking any of the dishes. I'm not taking any. I'm going to have a different aesthetic for this new place. So I'm just getting rid of, you know, you know how I got rid of a lot of stuff? Craigslist. I just literally put it on the corner and put it up. It's here to the corner, gave the address, and that stuff disappeared in an hour or two. So I got rid of a lot of stuff. Because once again, if, it, if, I could, if I couldn't sell it for 75, I didn't try to sell it. I just gave it away. Just gave it away. And that worked really well. So we've got a lot of stuff out of here. I got a storage unit with the washer, dryer, bedroom set and another sofa set that I wasn't going to take to the new place and next month you know because now I can kind of chill because you know it was a little stressful trying to sell all that stuff and it wasn't selling but that treadmill that I, I got the plan for that so we're you know once I get fully moved the content will go back up and let's talk about the content this happened today and it's very funny Someone accused me of removing the video from the Lost Kings. I didn't remove it. I actually posted proof on both pages that YouTube removed it. And see this, this is kind of part of my plan. I knew if the video like really got a lot of traction that YouTube would remove it. And it's a brand new channel. So that's just a warning. I can't do it again. Cause if I do it again, I'm going to get a community strike and I won't be able to upload and I do it again, I'm gonna get another community strike. Like first community strike, you cannot upload or do anything for a week. Second community strike, you cannot upload or do anything for two weeks. Third community strike, that's the end of your channel. So what I'm going to do, since I have so many people looking for that video, I've uploaded that video to my site where I have 100% control. So if you wanna see it, you gotta to come to me. And I'm just amazed at how many people, because like, here's, here's my thing, guys. I wanted that video to get a million views. <laughs> I really did. And it was on its way. It was on its way, but YouTube cut the legs from under it. So uh, that ain't going to happen no more. But the channel should be monetized next week. So that was 
worth doing it just alone to get the channel monetized because it would have taken me five or six months to get that channel monetized, maybe longer. So, yeah, th there's a whole bunch of people. And, you know, it's funny how many people were checking for that video because this chick, she was like, all these other people uploaded your video. We knew you were going to remove it. And I was like, I wonder what else you got wrong, you dumb bitch. I wonder what else you got wrong. I didn't remove it. And here's the thing. If you've downloaded that video and you have it on your channel and YouTube has identified this as a video they don't want on their platform, be very, very wary because what they did to me, they could do it to you. And if you have any additional community strikes, it could be the end of your channel. So it's pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Um, I knew YouTube would do that. And that and it was a brand new channel, so I took a risk because, like, if they deleted the channel, I was like, it's a brand new channel. I'll just create another channel. Um, it, it's kind of funny. But this was a very good week in the car rental business because, like, every day I was cutting off cars. I, I got another one that's cut off, and the guy's trying to negotiate. Now, th this, this is what's funny. He owes me two weeks of rent. And he's like, I had to replace the tire. He, he actually said this. I will give you the key if you pay me for the tire. Yeah, he's two weeks behind. And I was like, dude, you, you're two weeks behind. Why would I pay you for a tire that you ran over some? I was like, look, bro, I'll just have it towed and replace the key. You don't know who you're talking to. That's a tax deduction for me. That's just a tax deduction for me. So you have no leverage to get your money for this tire. And uh, he... he I don't know. I don't know, but we're going to probably go pick that one up tomorrow. And um, tomorrow I have an appointment. We're going to try to pick that one up because tomorrow's a tight day. I got to um, go to my new place, get the keys and all this other stuff. So we're going to try. That may happen after I get my place tomorrow, get that car back, get another key made for it. Cause I'll just have it towed. I'll just have it towed. Uh, I got some. I got a team. I got a guy who can really grease anything. So, and it, it, this this is funny. Cause like this is one of my big fears with the kill switches. Like I turn off the car, they will get vindictive and not give up the key. And this clown, once again, he's like, I will give you the key if you pay me for the tire. I'm like, fool, you two weeks behind. Also, I went ahead and I kind of played the odds. I kind of let some people slide just to see if they would ever make it up, and nope. So we're gonna go back to our 12 hour cutoff time, cut them off at 12 hours, get the car. Uh, I gotta get some more keys made because I have second key to most of the fleet, but not every car. So I gotta get that done. And like I said, we're gonna ride through November, we're gonna ride through December. We're just going to recoup a lot of expenses but I feel pretty damn good about this now because uh, by the end of the year, I, I should be down to, I've got 31 cars. I know there's, that Camry, they're gonna total out. I know they're gonna total that out. So it's gonna bring me down to 30, so by the end of the year, I'm gonna be down to 28 cars. And I'm not gonna add any more cars until next year. Because once again, I have a different buying plan. I have a whole different plan. I have a whole different um, tactic that I'm going to do. Because, you know, my whole goal was I went into this not knowing what I was doing. I had no clue. But I've learned a lot in six months. And I am glad that I financed that car. And I'm going to do a video breaking down all the numbers. <coughs> Starting to get a car back to and it is way down. And I'm also knowing, well, I'm also knowing that most of the people who are involved in this one guy that messed up the BMW, and this is so funny. I had three dealerships ask me about that BMW, and I was like, it's wrecked. It needs a new radiator. And you know, after you know, we see what happens. But if I can put another radiator room in there and rent that bad boy out, I'm gonna do that. I might do that. But right now, I have 
the Mercedes, which is going to be fixed by Gerber on the 26th. I have another BMW with the bumper hanging off. I'm not going to come out of pocket on that one. And then I have the two Camrys. So I'm probably going to sell one Camry. I'm going to get a check for another one. If I get a decent check, I would probably buy another car this year as a replacement for that car. So we will see. And uh, yeah, man, that's it. It's been a really good day. It's been a good day. I know y'all missed me yesterday, but like yesterday was such a bear that I went to bed at 9 o'clock. And uh, I'm going to get my content out today, tomorrow, this weekend. We're going to start putting it out, putting it out. So also, for those of you who want to see that video, I'm going to put a link below. You can go to the disruptivemail.org, uh, and I'm going to have that video. And I'm going to have follow-up videos about some other stuff that will be included in that package that I will never put on YouTube. Because once again, YouTube took down one of my videos. I have been served over. They're like, you ever put up another video like that? You can leave it. This is how you do it. Uh, someone put up a comment that, hey, you know, they need to leave all your money. Now we're not going to have But if I go to Netflix and put up something else like that, and do it, I can do it. So I'm not going to do anything. All the stuff that's going to be super saucy is going to be on my website. And it's not going to be on YouTube. YouTube stuff is going to be very, you can, you can listen to this stuff, well, maybe not with your grandma. Maybe not with your grandma. So, um, yeah. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.